scripture reading comes from Galatians 6, 1 through 10. <clears throat> My friends, if anyone is detected in transgression, you who have received the spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourself are not tempted. Bear one another's burdens, and in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own load. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, however, or whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. Gentleness, a fruit of the Spirit. We'll be walking through the story um, of Moses and the Israelites, and we'll be walking through um, each week a fruit of the Spirit and what it looks like to live that life that God calls us to, what it means to follow Jesus Christ, and, and what others see in us and how we react and how we deal with the things that come our way. In this baptismal covenant, we ask each of us, just as we just asked Macy, to renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness and to reject the evil powers of this world. They are real. They do real harm. They make real brokenness. And I think it would behoove us as followers of Christ to not ever underestimate the power of evil that is present and is at work in this world. We are very blessed. Many of us have not faced a battle um, that the Israelites faced in slavery and, and being completely taken over by another in body and in mind and in spirit. But that evil is very present in our world, whether we have tasted it or not. And there are other evils that we have experienced, other battles that we have fought that are painful, that do break us and wreck us, and that are very troubling. But in every battle that we face, no matter how much it consumes us or not, there is always a choice of what to plant in it. And the call to gentleness is not an easy one when you place it in the context of injustice and of evil and powers of oppression. <coughs> How do we pray for those who are breaking us? How do we leave room for God to love them as well? How do we be able to be present and create enough margin in our relating that we're able to see the complexities of life? John, I'm going to call on your prayer this morning. Um, we're going to pray for Eric just as we are praying for the women. Because just as he made an unsafe place for others in his work, so he encountered a completely upending, unsafe moment in his life. And so it is the spiritual fruit of gentleness that empowers us to hold both of those present. To not divorce it from the strength and the call to justice and right relationship that is important, but also not to cast anyone aside and to pray for them and all that they experience in life as well. This is the both and call that is way beyond my capability. But that is why I rely on God's power within me to lead me and show me a different way. Because if we can be gentle with each other, if we can honor the battles each other are fighting, 
then there might be just a way for that Holy Spirit, that spirit of gentleness, to blow through us and to set us free. It is not an easy journey. It is not an easy call. But it is one we can do because of the love. I'm about to put the book down with the baptismal. But we can do it because of the power God gives us to resist evil and justice and oppression in whatever form they present themselves. And that means resisting ourselves when we are the ones doing the oppressing and the harming. And giving that over to God to break to let die in the waters of our baptism as we are raised to a new way of living and to a new life and a new way of relating. It also means the power that God gives us for when we are hurt, when we are the ones who are damaged, to be able to trust again, to be able to love again, to be able to want that for the person who did the hurting. The only way this happens is through the love and the power of a savior who gave all of who he is to show us the way out, to show us how to do this. And so if we trust that this path, that this way of gentleness is worth it, if we trust leaving vengeance for God while still holding a line of righteousness and of mercy, then we can be a community of faith that is alive, that is real, that people come to and ask, what is it with those Epworth people and who are they and what is going on? Because there's something happening there that I've never seen or tasted or felt or even comprehended was possible in life. That is who we are called to be as disciples to receive the love that God has given us, to understand the love of a holy parent that will hold us and that will take what we can do when we, in whatever situation we find and hold the rest of our growth until we're ready to step forward into a deeper level of commitment and a deeper and greater risk. Macy just showed for all of us today what this means to walk. And being scared, yes, it's going to happen. There are real forces out there. This is real risk. But we take them because we are with a family that will reorganize itself and make sure that we are in a place where we can step forward into it. And we have the support that we need to do it well. And we're going to mess up, but we're going to keep trying. And we're going to learn from those mistakes. And we're going to let God hold those for us as well so that we can then put that into our body, soul, memory, so that when something comes again, we can lean back, nope, I've been there, I know that, I can do this differently today. And if God can do that for us, can hold that space for us, as God calls and chastises and enchants and grows us forward into the people God knows we can be and created us to be, then this is our call of what we do for each other and for the world. And if there's anything this world needs right now and all of the divides that are happening and all of the fear that is raging and all of the anger and in all of the worlds that have turned upside down, it is gentleness. So may we be gentle with each other. May we contribute to the United Methodist Committee on Relief to provide some margin and gentleness and presence and space for all of those who are facing um, homelessness um, from the storms and don't know how to rebuild. And prayers, too, for the Rohingya who are suffering um, in Myanmar and flooding to Bangladesh to try to escape um, with their lives and then land in Bangladesh in a country that is a third of it under water and in its own crisis and own battle. We pray for a gentleness that will make space for all to find the healing that they need, for all to find wholeness, for all to find freedom, and for us to know that there is enough of that for each and every one of us. So let us stand and sing. Lead on, O fiery pillar and cloud of presence, because we don't do this journey alone. And this week, be gentle.
and leave room for the battles that others are fighting.